All right, today I'm going to show you how to change a shaft and bearing on a 1510 small bearing frame. To get to this point, you can go to the 1510 video that I did. Uh, that'll get you here, and then we can start taking apart the bearing assembly. So here we go. If you notice, there are four screws, four bolts, on a cover type plate for the bearing shaft and housing assembly. We'll start by taking these off. If you notice, this water slinger is still on here, and we'll take that off first. Make sure it's pliable. Make sure it's good and soft and tight on the shaft. And of course, this one is because it's brand new, so we'll reuse this. So now we'll start by taking out the bolts All right, so I've got them all loose. So we'll just take them out by hand here. All right, at this point in time, this is a new style bearing assembly. And this cover has a pressed in zerk. So it will pull straight out. On the older ones, it used to have a threaded zerk that would stick up a little bit higher. This one we can pull straight out. The other ones that have a threaded zerk on them, you want to remove that zerk. You're going to have to remove that zerk in order to get the plate out. All right, we got the bolts out of the cover. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the cover off and then the whole shaft assembly with it. And it just slides right out the front. If you notice there's some grease in here, of course this is new because it's a new bearing assembly. You'll want to clean this up good before you put it back together. So we'll set this aside, and we'll grab the assembly and the shaft and wiggle it out. And if you notice, the whole shaft comes out, bearings and all. All right, now we've got the shaft assembly out of the housing, and what we're going to do is we're going to clean it out. And there's one other little catch back here. Johnny, if you want to get in here, I'll show you what it is. There's a waffle spring back here that acts as a spacer for the back bearing so that the grease will go inside the housing. You're going to have to reach in and pull this out. It's not a very clean job. And if you notice, it's a waffle spring. That's the way it's supposed to look. Acts as a buffer between the back bearing and the housing. Inspect it as long as you got it out, but nine times out of ten, it's not going to be damaged or anything. So you can reuse this. So I'll set it aside for now. All right, we've got the waffle spring out. Now we can inspect uh, the housing. We can clean it out, get all the old grease out of it before we start putting things back into it. And grab a towel. And we just want to clean out the cavities. And the hub, if it's full of grease, again, there's an inspection hole on the bottom. If there's uh, grease caked in here, just get it out of there. Get this whole thing cleaned out. And then we can start thinking about putting it back together. All right, we've got the assembly set aside. Now we're going to take the bearings off of the shaft. Now when you start working on some of the older ones, you're going to be covered in grease with this stuff. And I like to get a lot of the grease out of the way. So I just wipe everything down. And then we'll bring our puller into play here. All right. With your puller, we're going to put it on the end of the shaft, right where the impeller sits. We're going to put it behind the bearing. Pull the bearing off of the shaft. Hear that pop? That means it let loose. 
and it'll probably tighten up on you again and it'll pop a couple more times. Now by doing the shaft and bearings, you're going to save yourself a couple hundred dollars at least instead of buying a whole brand new bearing assembly. About an hour's worth of time, that's pretty much all it should take you to do this. And if you have a press, it'll probably take you less time. And if you notice, it's getting easier. And off comes the front bearing. All right, we'll take our bad bearings, bearing, and we'll set it aside. And now we'll do the back bearing. <laughs> All right, we're done with the puller for now, so we'll set that aside. We've got the bearings off of the shaft. At this point in time, you can inspect your shaft to see if you need to replace it. Very few times do you need to replace it. Usually just the bearings are bad. But if you need to do the shaft, we'll get to that in a second. All right, got the shaft wiped down. And obviously at this point in time, I would go get a new shaft, but I'm working on a brand new bearing assembly, so I'm not gonna use a brand new shaft. It's a brand new shaft anyways. So we'll just use this for the purpose of the video. We'll pretend that it's nice and brand new and out of the box. <clears throat> and we'll go over to the vise and we'll clamp it in place. And you can use the raise on the shaft. This doesn't come into play as far as the pump operation at all. So you, that's the part you want to clamp into the, uh, the vise. All right, got it good and tight. We'll come over here and get the front bearing. The front bearing goes on with the shaft sleeve and it's the larger of the two bearings. Comes in a box, little cray paper, with a little bit of grease in there. We're gonna have to pack these after we get them on the shaft. All right, back over to the shaft. What I like to do is I like to grease the shaft and the bearing so when you're pounding the bearings into place, they slide on a little bit easier. So we'll take a little bit of grease. And then we'll come over to the shaft. And you can see where it sits on the shaft. It goes on this raised part right here. So we'll put some grease on here. Once you get it greased the way you want it, Now, we'll set the bearing over the shaft, aligning it the best we can. Outboard side of the bearing goes to the outer housing. And it'll stop where it has to be loaded. Now we'll grab our hammer. I like to get it started tapping in a circle on the inner ring of the bearing. Try not to hit the outer ring of the bearing. So we'll just uh, go around here, we'll set it as square as we can get it. All right. Let's take a look. Make sure it's kind of going on square. You don't want to twist the bearing either. All right, it's starting. All right, now that we've got it started and it's somewhat square, I go to a bigger hammer, good sturdy piece of steel pipe, whatever you prefer. All right, here we go. In a circular motion, again, on the inside of the bearing, We'll rest the piece of pipe in there. Try to tip it towards the shaft just a little bit so you don't hit the outer ring on the bearing. And just give it a good tap. Rotate. Always rotating as you go. 
And the farther you go, keep checking to make sure that it's square. As we approach the collar that the bearing bottoms out on, you'll hear the pitch change when I hit the metal. Just about there. It's getting a little louder. So the front bearing is done. We'll take it out of the vise. And just take a quick inspection of it. And if you notice, it's right up against the collar. And now we'll do the back bearing. So we'll put it back in the vise. All right. We got the shaft in the vise again. Take our other bearing, the small bearing. Out of the box. All right, same scenario. Grease the inner hub of the bearing. Same thing on the shaft. Right here. Now we'll set the bearing in place. Again, keeping it as square as you can keep it. Outboard side of the bearing goes to the outer housing. We'll grab our hammer and we'll tap it into place. piece of pipe. Right, again in circles. And as you're pounding it on you can kind of look down and see what the high side is as you're doing it. This one's going on real nice. Again, listen for the change in pitch when you're hitting it, and we're just about there. Nice little ding, which tells me I'm bottomed out. All right, now we'll take it out of the vise. And set it on the table in front of us. What I do is I like to take a rag and wipe off some of that excess grease that's around the bearing. And then right now you can check the bearings to make sure you didn't knock any of the pipe off or into the bearings. Clean it out if you need to, both sides. And now comes the fun part. The reason why I pack the bearings after they're on the shelf is for the reason I just explained. If there's anything in there, you can remove it now and it's not sitting in the new grease. So we'll grab a tube of grease and we'll start packing the bearings. The fun part. Take your grease, slide it around, shove it in with your fingers. Make sure it's good and packed. You want grease all the way around to the back side. <clears throat> yes, I've done this before. <laughs> Just keep packing it until it's all the way in there. All 
and I pack them until the grease is flush with the outside. All right, got the bearings good and packed. Take the extra grease, I'll set this tube aside. I'm gonna bring a towel in here, set this on so I don't get my table all dirty. All right, we've got the cavity cleaned out, or the housing, I should call it. We've got the waffle spring cleaned out, or cleaned off. And we're ready to put the shaft back in. Now the waffle spring, there is no specific place it goes at all. It just has to be dropped in, so it keeps that uh, opening back here for the bearing. So I just take the waffle spring, and drop it right in. Usually sits in place, wiggle it around if you need to, make sure it's up against the cast. Take the shaft into the housing and just drop it into place. Everything looks good, bearings are packed, and that's it. Now we can put the cover back on. Slide it back on. And we'll put our four bolts in. All right, we've got the cap back on. Water slinger next. Don't forget your water slinger. Before we put the slinger on, what I want to do is I want to buff the shaft sleeve. So I'll get my emery cloth and John, I'll come over to your side. Just like in the 1510 video, when you get to this part, it's a good time to buff the shaft sleeve. A bit of emery cloth. Just clean it up and get the tarnish off of it. and we'll wipe it down and then we'll take our water slinger slide it over the shaft sleeve back just past where the raise is for the shaft sleeve itself now when you put this back together follow the 1510 video that I did before Get the pump running and then grease it. Now, it's going to take more than the three, four times that I told you to pump through your grease gun. The cavities are empty, but you pack the bearings. Grease it until the cavity is full or you hear the bearing gurgle from it being forced while it's running. Another way to tell that it's full is if grease starts to come out this seal back here. Stop greasing if you get grease out here or in front of this bearing cover that we just put on. Then you can pump some water and you know it's well maintained. And I'm going to smoke. <laughs>